So I just bought this thing. It's a mini theremin kit. And the reason I got this is, well, first of all, it just looks like a fun project. But second of all, this is made by one of the companies that's suing the US federal government over its tariffs. And just to recap in case you don't know, the president recently imposed tariffs on imports from every country. And normally only Congress has the power to raise tariffs. The president has some limited power in times of emergencies, but a couple of months ago, a federal court ruled that the tariffs go beyond the president's emergency powers and thus aren't legal. Of course, that decision was appealed, but just a couple of weeks ago, the appeals court upheld the original decision. And now, of course, it's waiting to be heard by the Supreme Court. But at the time that I'm recording this video, the tariffs have been found to be illegal. And since I own a small business and I import a lot of stuff and have to pay a lot of tariff, and because I lived for a number of years in Europe where there are also high tariffs, I thought it might be worth sharing my insight on this topic. So yeah, let's put this together and uh, see how it is. So for context, my business is mostly just me, and I design products and I sell them, and I do have a manufacturing partner that helps with assembly, and they usually employ one or maybe 1.5 people just to work on my stuff. But we do the assembly here in the United States, but we use parts that come from all over the world. And I'm not exactly prepared to open my books for the world to see right now. I know people on YouTube like to see receipts, and you're not going to see them right now. Now, but I've been paying a lot of tariffs. In fact, I personally don't expect to make any like personal income this year at all. That's in part because I've made a strategic decision to reinvest everything back into R&D this year. But it's also in part because of the tariffs. And I know that everyone on YouTube seems like they have unlimited cash for some reason, but I don't. I actually live pretty meagerly. And that too is also mostly a strategic decision. You know, I could probably make more money if I got like a job or something, but I hate working, so I'd rather just kind of do my own thing even if it means not making very much. But still, what I've paid in tariffs this year could have easily covered my rent for the year and maybe my groceries too. But okay, so why don't I just buy American stuff? Why don't I use American parts? Which is one of the things that the tariffs are supposed to incentivize. Well, some things I would love to buy domestically. For instance, most of my products have these custom machined aluminum housings. And just to be clear, I don't actually think the aluminum is part of the current lawsuit. Trump levied aluminum tariffs during his previous term and Biden failed to repeal them. But anyway, over the years, I've contacted many American manufacturers about them. I would love to just go down the street and talk to the machinist who's making these. But most of the people I've contacted haven't responded at all, and the ones that have have given me quotes that are completely whimsical. Even if I'm trying to buy, say, a thousand of them, I've gotten quotes in the ballpark of hundreds of dollars, even up to, I think, like $500 per unit, just for one small aluminum housing, which the last time I checked, this only contains about a dollar worth of aluminum. And I mean, I know there's labor and machine time involved too, but at first glance, it's not clear how the market could even support to price in that ballpark. I mean, if I priced my entire finished product, of which the housing is only one small component, at $500, it wouldn't sell at all. The market wouldn't support that price. So how does the market support $500 for just one small part? Well, the answer is that it doesn't. Machine shops in the US exist because of military contracts, and the military pays very high prices for everything. And this is in part because the military has very high specs, like you can't make a fighter jet out of just anything. You need unusually high quality, and of course that's gonna be expensive. But in addition to that, my own pet conspiracy theory is that the military also pays high prices for everything because companies like Lockheed Martin have been price gouging them for decades, and the prices that they set have trickled down into every machine shop in the country. But either way, the military might pay $500 for $1 worth of aluminum, because ultimately they're spending taxpayer money, and that just doesn't obey the same market forces that govern consumer products like the ones that I sell. And the upshot of that is that machine shops in the US just don't want to deal with consumer products. Whereas on the other 
other hand, it's easy to find a manufacturer in China who's willing to manufacture these for just a couple of dollars each. And even with $10,000 in tariffs added, I can still at least sell my products at a profit even if I would have preferred to spend that $10,000 on rent. So at least in that case, the underlying problem that prevents me from buying American products seems like it was actually created by the federal government, and it strikes me that the federal government could actually solve that problem as well, but I don't think the tariffs really address it. On top of that, still on the question of why don't I just buy American stuff, is that, well, actually I do buy some American stuff. For instance, I buy chips from Texas Instruments, which is an American company, and I get charged very high tariffs on them. I honestly still can't even figure that out because I buy them from an American distributor and they're shipped to me from America. I don't know where they're manufactured, but TI does have manufacturing facilities in the US and it's conceivable that those chips, as far as I know, have never left American soil. The issue, I think, is that the government doesn't seem to have any way of collecting the tariffs that themselves. Oh yeah, baby. And nobody else seems to know the details. In fact, everybody seems confused, especially because the details keep changing. So often it seems like it just comes down to DHL, which is a German company, charging me apparently whatever they feel like. I think they just see that I've ordered chips, but I'm not sure how they would necessarily even know which facility they were manufactured in. I doubt that's even public information. So ultimately I think they just guess and charge whatever. And this confusion around the tariffs also just makes it really difficult to run a business in general. For example, sometimes I'm charged the tariff that's in effect when I place an order, and sometimes I'm charged the tariff based on what's in effect when I receive the order, which could be the difference between 10 and 250%. And sometimes I search the same part on different distributors' websites and get completely different quotes, even for identical parts. And often I can't even figure out if I'm going to be selling a product at a profit or a loss until after all of the parts have already shown up at my door. I mean, you know, like, if I have to pay the illegal tariffs, it would be nice if I could at least know how much it's gonna be before I decide to order stuff. And the other somewhat unrelated thing to that that I don't fully understand is why the tariffs are even still in effect and why even new tariffs continue to be levied after they've already been found to be illegal in court. I mean, I understand that the appeals process is still ongoing, but for example, certainly in a criminal case, like if you are convicted of murder, you don't just go free during the appeals process. You don't get to go around freely killing people while you're trying to file appeals. I mean, maybe civil cases are different, but it seems like a mistake in our legal system that unresolved issues are permitted rather than denied. Okay, then and so the next question is, why don't I just raise prices? Like if I'm not making any money, then certainly I should just raise prices, right? Well, actually I did raise prices a couple of months ago, which greatly pains me, especially because my DIY product line is supposed to be more accessible for more people at a lower price. But anyway, the problem is that the market for my products in general is not very elastic, which means that for example, if I raise my prices by 10%, my sales actually go down by more than 10%. So even though I make more money per product, I still make less money overall by selling fewer products. So I guess I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, if you will. Raising prices doesn't just magically solve it. Okay, now, as I said, I used to live in Europe. I lived for a couple of years in Norway, and they have a 50% tariff on basically everything, even for products that come from mainland Europe. And Norway is a small country with an increasingly tourism-based economy, meaning that they don't actually produce that much, so everything is imported, and everything costs about 1.5 times as much as it would in the U.S. And in fact, when I lived there, I used to muse about how lucky we were not to have tariffs in the U.S. So you might say that, well, if other countries have high tariffs, then maybe I shouldn't complain. I mean, it's somewhat normal throughout the world. The tariffs aren't unusual. What?
But on the other hand, when I lived there, I at least played with the idea of moving my company there. And that wasn't going to work for other reasons, but that didn't stop me from thinking about it. And my conclusion was that it just wouldn't have worked because of the tariffs. It would have cost so much for me to produce products that I wouldn't have been able to sell them in the global market at a price that consumers would have been willing to pay. I mean, basically, my prices would have had to have been 1.5 times whatever they are currently. And in fact, companies like mine just don't exist in Norway, as far as I can tell. And they can kind of get away with it because their economy, well, it was previously based on oil, and now it's based more on tourism. But their economy doesn't really depend on small businesses like mine. And about that oil, that was going to be my other point about Norway. In the US, when somebody discovers oil, the oil belongs to them and them alone, and only that person directly profits, and the American people don't directly benefit from it. In Norway, by contrast, when they discovered oil, the government set up a state oil company and extracted the oil themselves, and all the money that was made went into a sovereign wealth fund that belongs to the Norwegian people. And when I was there, that was valued at a little over a hundred thousand US dollars per person. Now I think it's more now, but each Norwegian basically has a hundred thousand dollars essentially sitting in a bank account that's managed by the government. And one of the things that that's used for is that if you don't have a job, the government pays you a daily stipend. And I don't recall the amount, but I think it ended up being near the median salary in Norway. So nobody's getting rich off of it, but it isn't poverty wages either, and it isn't welfare, it isn't funded by taxes, it's money that already belongs to the people because the country's natural resources also already belong to the people, which in the US, they don't. And the upshot of that is that poverty really just doesn't exist in Norway in the same way that it does in the US. Everybody basically has the same quality of life, and in particular as it regards tariffs, I mean the tariffs are basically just a number. The tariffs aren't making anyone homeless or making people skip meals. The tariffs aren't really a hardship for anybody. So it's not really fair to say that, well, Norway has tariffs and they're fine, so maybe it shouldn't be a big deal if the US has tariffs too, because the US just doesn't have anything in place that prevents tariffs from exacerbating poverty. And as a side note, the tariffs in Norway have also given them an inflation problem, which is made worse by the fact that they aren't in the EU and have their own pitiful currency, but they're able to use their sovereign wealth fund to at least somewhat stabilize their inflation. But anyway, that's a different story. Anyway, so yeah, this is it. And uh, just to be clear, this video isn't a cry for help or anything like that. I'm not going out of business, and personally, I'm doing fine financially, at least for the moment. Normally, at this point in the video, I would beg you to buy stuff from my website, but I'm not even going to do that right now. That's not what this video is. Mostly, I just wanted to get all this stuff off my chest. But if a rant doesn't feel complete without a call to action, and I guess you could buy one of these from these people. This was really fun to put together, and I'm sure arguing a case in the Supreme Court isn't cheap, so I guess it would go to a good cause. My review of this is that I think it was designed maybe more for kids than for musicians. It was fun and easy to put together and there was nice documentation and everything, but I think it would be difficult to play actual music on it. 
Uh, and I think this one operates on a slightly different principle than the original theremin. This one looks like it has a little microcontroller and a timer, whereas I think the original one was purely analog using two heterodyning oscillators. Anyway, I guess that's all I had to say for now. If you want to know what this thing is all about, subscribe because I'm going to have a video about it soon. And it's not going to be a rant, it's going to be one of my normal musical videos. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!